All right, so today I'm working on this um, Santa and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to share with you how I paint uh, Santa beards. And um, what I like to use is a, a Royal Filbert comb brush. Um, I like the Royals because when you load the paint into them, they, they keep their spring. They don't get flat and mushy and you can um, get nice fine looking lines with them and hopefully I'll be able to do that today. Um, and you, when you use a um, comb brush, which is also called a rake brush, you want to keep in mind that what it is, is basically it's like a whole lot of liner brushes in one. So you're going to use it the same way you would a liner brush. You're going to use liner consistency paint and you're going to load your brush and you're going to blot it out. And just as you would with a liner brush, when you use this, you stay as straight up and down on the brush as you can and up on the tips of it. So the, the first thing I do when I'm painting a Santa beard is I like to give it a coat, a base coat of slate gray. And it doesn't have to be opaque. You can see, you can see the background through this. Um, but I like to have that as the underwear of my beard. And um, that way it gives it a little bit more depth and a little bit more variation in the beard. And the first uh, color that I'm going to stroke on to this slate gray beard is um, Fawn. I'll use Mink Tan or Fawn. Again, Deco Art Paints because I love Deco Art Paints. And I'm going to um, thin my paint down to liner consistency. And um, let me move these brushes out of the way. So I can grab my, get my palette in here. And what I like to use, you could use just clear water, um, but I like to use a um, a little medium that is um, Winsor Newton Acrylic Flow Improver. And um, this is the concentrate bottle. You mix it with water and you use it in place of your clear water when you load your brush. So where I would normally load my brush with clear water, I'm going to pick up some Flow Improver and use that to thin my paint down. So I'm gonna make a pretty good puddle and I know um, I like to keep my puddle connected to my main puddle of paint just so that it's easier for me to pull more color in if I need it. So um, I've made some liner consistency paint and I've loaded my brush up pretty good. And I'm going to go to my towel and blot it out. And I might pick up just a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll go to my palette and see what kind of lines I'm getting with my Thing. And, and you'll notice I like to use my pinky finger as a um, kind of like a stand uh, uh, support to uh, help me to stay up on the tip of my uh, brush. So what I'm going to do first is I like to start in this area, the middle of his, uh, the middle of his beard. And this isn't going to show up a whole lot, but I'm going to stroke on some of this mink uh, fawn. Uh, like I said, I use, I use mink tan a lot too, but today I decided to use fawn instead. And I'm gonna just go over the whole beard. And um, what I like to tell my students is, this adds another layer of dimension to his beard, but it also gives you an opportunity to um, get the feel for your brush and kind of decide which way you want his beard to go. Now I'm pulling it pretty straight with just a curl at the end, but you could go in and you could start pulling waves, which might look kind of cool. But in this first coat with this, uh, with the thin fawn, you get a, a good chance to just kind of get a feel for your brush. And I also like to start pulling it off the side edge of his beard so that I can start trying to get rid of the hard edges of that slate gray. And you see when I'm going to this curl 
what I'm doing is I'm turning the brush and coming on the um, chisel edge of it so that I can make that curl. When I get up here to his face, and I'll see if I can get a little closer. No, nope, wrong button. I stopped it. So we'll get a little closer. When I get up around his face, and I'm not going to worry too much about his hat band because I'll come in and do that later. Once again, I'm going to pull little strands off his face because um, if you look at your hair, your hairline isn't straight and um, solid. It kind of you kind of have a varying hairline. So here I'm going to pull down, and I. Don't worry about the mustache too much. I come back and do the mustache after um, I'm done with the beard. So here we go. Pull a little bit more. And uh, if you look at old men's beards, some of their whiskers come out of their cheeks. Okay. So I've got a pretty good base on there. So I'll wash my brush out. And now I'm going to come on with warm white. And again, I'm going to thin it down to liner consistency. And I'll start in the same place. I'm working my way through the beard. And you see, I'm not trying to get the whole beard in one covering. I'm going to do a few layers. So what it is, is, it takes some patience and just going back and forth. So what might happen here is I might put this into fast forward and let you just watch me Watch how fast I can do this beard. Huh. Oops, got a little thick there, but you know, that's all right. It adds texture. And here again, I'm going off the edge so I can kind of start wiping out that um, hard edge. And normally you pull the way a beard grows, but um, I'm getting down here to a little curly cue at the end and I really want to set that in so I'm going to pull it from the tip for a little bit just to get that set in there. And here again I'll come back up to his hair line and you see I'm pulling off the edge. What I'm doing is I'm softening that hard edge a little bit and I'm also giving him a more realistic hairline because as I jokingly say on most of my stuff, this is a very technically correct piece, you know. Ha. As if that would ever happen for me. So, this is how I work on beards. On hair, actually, and beards. paint so I'm just gonna mix it up real quick and I'm gonna start back here in the middle again and I'm just gonna get my beard a little more solid but you can still see some of the brown and some of the um, slate gray underneath so it's not all wiped out use my pinky just to kind of act as my little anchor to keep me up on the tip of my brush and you you can see I'm trying to stay as straight up and down with my brush as I can that really 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 makes a big difference in 
what kind of strokes you get with your uh, comb brush. Let me come over here again because I want to wipe out that hard edge a little bit more. Just keep working, keep adding layers. Got a little bit of a light here, it's hard to see what I'm doing. See, I'm getting up into the mustache, but that's okay because I'm going to cover it up with the mustache. Let me get some more white on his beard, on his hair. This is just like anything else you do in decorative painting. The more um, times you do it, the better you seem to get at it. And that's why you don't want to hurry the layers because it seems like you the best layers that you put on are always some of those last ones because you've really gotten a feel for the brush, for the consistency of the paint. I decided I wanted a few more little wispy curls before it gets into that last big one. But you can see what I'm doing here. Just, I'm just building up layers, but I'm keeping that little bit of gray in the background, little bits of brown you can see here and there. That was the fawn. Okay. Right now, I'm going to go back to his mustache and I'm going to work on it for a little while. And I'm going to go back with the same um, uh, order of colors. I'm going to first start with some um, thin fawn. I'm sorry, I say um a lot. And when you're doing a mustache, I want you to think about it. Mustaches don't just come out of the nose all in one place. They kind of come out all around the bottom of the nose. So don't just pull them all from one place. Kind of follow the bottom edge of your nose. Or his nose, not your nose unless you have a nose like this. So, 
we work our way around the mustache with our fawn. Just putting the underwear on his mustache. And what usually happens with the mustache is it's a smaller area, so you work it a little faster. So that means you have to let it dry before you can go on it with your uh, warm white, or you're going to get mush. And mush on a mustache is not good. So I'm just going to dry it real quick. And then I'm going to come on top of it with some layers of warm white, just like I did the beard. And here again, I'm going to pull and come on the side there with that filbert comb so I can get the curves and curls. And just like anything else, one way is easier than the other. Pulling eyelashes, one way is easier than the other. Same goes for pulling those curls on the beard. Here again, I want to let this dry a little bit. I'm using my Ranger Heat It Gum. Dries it really quick. the mustache to stand out just a little bit more. And he could stand to be just a little whiter. Whiter, not whiter. Okay, cool. It's a pretty nice looking little mustache. I'm going to dry it. Then what I like to do is take a little of that slate gray. And with my flat brush going to take I'm going to take a little bit of slate gray and where there we are blend it on my palette a little bit and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of mink tan what I'm doing is I'm making a little bit of a shadow color what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to float it on the hair under the hat brim just to set it underneath and here again it doesn't matter that there's hair up on that hat brim because we'll fix that later I'm also going to take it and float it on the underneath the mustache to put it on top of the beard And I'm also going to float it. I have to mix it a little bit more, sorry. And these are soft floats, you don't want to make them too harsh. Right here above the mustache to set it away. Okay. And then you can also float it here and there in the beard itself if you want to set in curls a little bit more so down here I want to set in a little bit of a curl there let's see how I use my finger to blend that a little bit I'll probably want to set in here just 
just wherever. Oh, and you also want to go under his nose. So on the mustache, under his nose. Just to set that down underneath his nose. So, that's how I like to.